This video will analyze the controversial Plessy v. Ferguson Supreme Court decision. Before diving into the decision, let's first put the case into context. After the Civil War ended, the North attempted to socially, politically, and economically reconstruct the South. From the late 1860s to the mid-1870s, the U.S. government attempted to give African Americans political rights, and through various types of assistance, attempted to help the newly freedmen adjust to becoming citizens in their new life. However, white Southern resistance was fierce. From black codes that restricted African Americans' movement and freedom to terrorist groups like the Ku Klux Klan, white Southerners were able to re reassert their control and dominance over African Americans after Reconstruction ended with the Compromise of 1877. Thus began the era of segregation, also known as Jim Crow. The North and Midwest were rapidly growing and industrializing, and there was an idea called the New South that the South could be modeled upon the North, but instead of immigrants providing the labor in factories, it could be the newly freedmen. This mostly stayed as an idea instead of a reality as the former Southern pre-Civil War plantation economy changed over to a post-Civil War sharecropping economy. This agricultural based economy left African Americans in a perpetual state of poverty and indebtedness to white landlords. Before Reconstruction ended, many progressive pieces of legislation and amendments were passed to give freedmen equal rights and opportunities. However, post-Reconstruction, Southern governments were attempting to roll back the progressive federal leg legislation and regressive state laws took away rights of African Americans. One of these was an 1890 piece of legislation from Louisiana that mandated railroads have separate railway cars for whites and blacks. A group of concerned citizens wanted to challenge the law and recruited Homer Plessy, who was one-eighth black, to purchase a first-class ticket for a white car. The railroad company had been informed, and the group of concerned citizens hired a private detective to arrest Plessy. This was to set up a test case and challenge Louisiana law. Now taking a look at the key points of the case, Plessy's lawyers argued the Louisiana law went against the 13th and 14th Amendments. They focused especially on the aspect of the law being discriminatory, as it is race-based, which is prohibited by the 14th Amendment. The Supreme Court issued a 7-1 decision in favor of the constitutionality of the Louisiana law and rejected Plessy's lawyers' claims that it went against the 13th and 14th Amendments. They argued the 14th Amendment did not apply to social situations and that laws requiring social segregation were within a state's rights. The court upheld that facilities could be segregated as long as they were equal in quality. The Supreme Court is weighing in on a contentious social issue. It is intending to clarify federal and state jurisdiction and also to interpret the recent 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments and how they apply to social situations and race relations. Moving on to who would agree and disagree, many white Southerners would agree with the ruling and there was mostly silence elsewhere. A few Northern congressmen voiced discontent, but the push to reconstruct the South and bring about equality for African Americans had lost all steam by this point. One Supreme Court Justice, Justice Harlan, dissented and wrote a scathing opinion of the majority decision, calling his fellow justices ignorant on the subject, and the ruling would lead to second-class citizenship for African Americans. Plessy v. Ferguson will have a long-lasting negative legacy. It represented federal approval of segregation, and it is important to note that this is not just a Southern phenomenon. In the North as well, by custom and by law, African Americans were segregated, especially during periods of African American migration from the South to Northern cities. It is also used in California to segregate the substantial Latino population from the white population. It will also open the floodgates for many laws segregating the races and voting laws that will make it nearly impossible for blacks to be able to vote or hold public office. And finally, it will be used to deny opportunities in all aspects of life for minorities. This decision is tied to the later 1954 Brown v. Board decision that will reverse Plessy v. Ferguson and state that segregation is inherently unequal. Also, the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 will, will prohibit discrimination in many aspects of life. Well, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please click that like button, check out some of my other videos, subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends.